Okay, here we go. We're live. Uh, no, I didn't. Um, I also don't know if they can hear you. I don't think they can. I'll fix that. Okay. Um, at least we caught it right at the beginning. Where? Okay. Uh, okay. So I, I will share with you. And we're good. Okay. We did it. <laughs> we're here. What oh, bed team. doing? What bed doing? I don't know what bed doing. <laughs> the oh, only the God. only thing that sleeps in my bed is my dog. Nobody else does. I don't. I just slowly die. It's true. Do you sleep at all? I didn't think you slept. No, I just watch my dog sleep and I sleep vicariously through him. <laughs> Accurate. I know this feeling. This is why Andrew and I have dogs, so we can sleep vicariously through them. <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of which, uh, I should send out a tweet. I should do that. I haven't done that yet. Um, but there's boat news. There's even American I... boat news. Oh, man, I was going to ignore that one. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. <laughs> I don't even know what to honestly I've kind of stayed away well okay you know what I'll start there um the American boat news there's a lot of people going around saying a lot of things about what they think happened and there's so many conspiracy theories and just don't like stop ships lose control steering control on a not infrequent basis, it's happened in the port of Odessa at least once that I know of. And that's just the one that was actually like really obvious. I don't know how many other times it's happened and I just haven't heard about it. Um, that's not abnormal for that to happen. It's not abnormal for power to cut on a ship. It is not abnormal for a generator to turn back on and shoot black smoke into the air um these things happen it sucks big time everybody remember, knows this do you remember that time a ship crashed into an airplane no what? <laughs> i think it's one of my favorite ship accidents <laughs> like it oh, like man. beached itself on an airport and crashed into an airplane that's amazing there's yeah. like honestly just in the black sea at least weekly, you can find ships that have had some sort of malfunction and gone awry somewhere just in the Black Sea. Like, it just is not infrequent. It just happens that they don't usually hit giant uh, bridges and kill a whole bunch of people. Yeah, that's yeah. usually... Literally <laughs> I think... Don't, don't typically you build like a concrete barrier around the bridge so the uh, the ship can't directly crash into it. I've had a few conversations about that with people today um, who believe that that ship is so big it wouldn't have probably mattered if there was a concrete barrier. But yes, like why there isn't more of a barrier around that particular bridge I think was probably a little bit of a failure on the infrastructure built in the Baltimore area. And, and probably it had to do with the fact that when they built that bridge, ships weren't as big. It wasn't as big a risk factor. Ships got bigger. It's really hard to decide to spend millions of dollars as somebody who wants to be elected as an official um, on something that people can't see the value of. And that's part of one of the downfalls of democracy in a way is that we tend to overlook really important infrastructure things because people spend money on it and then don't get elected the next year because they couldn't balance the budget. And it's like, okay, well, we prevented thousands of deaths, but we didn't budget properly. So it's, I don't know. I have a whole bunch of feelings about that too. You got me on a rant. Look what you did. That's what I was going for. Yeah. 
Oh. I think you like bait me into this every single week. Uh, people are calling it a giant drone and not, not a ship. <laughs> uh, maybe. Oh, anyway. Um, is th there's more boat news. There is more boat news. Uh, I can't remember even when the 23rd was anymore. Oh, I guess that was just on the weekend. Okay, so you didn't even talk about it on Friday. Um, Sevastopol had this fancy little thing happen where uh, there was a whole bunch of big things falling out of the sky causing very big booms. What those big things are is possibly up for interpretation. Um, one of those very big things that was missile shaped uh, hit the Black Sea Fleet uh, telecommunications building of some sort. We don't know exactly what was there, it doesn't sound like, uh, but there was definitely some satellites and other things that show that it was probably a fairly important target, and I assume that's why they hit it, um, which is great. There was lots of kind of there was, if you watch the video, I think there was three, one right after another that hit that particular target, which uh, if you really wanted something dead, I guess that's that's how you would do it. Um, so that's great. Uh, it looks like they did a good job of hitting the target they were trying to hit. Uh, it certainly looks like that particular building has a lot of damage. In that same attack, there were some ships in the ports. Um, we know for sure that, uh, one ship called the Yamal, um, was hit. We know there was some damage done to it. The Ukrainian, uh, defense intelligence, Ukraine came out yesterday and put out a tweet, which I actually was really impressed with. We often see from Ukrainian government sources, um, really hopeful wording about things and they sounded a lot more accurate about this particular uh incident um they talked about the yamal specifically being uh having a hole in the uh top of her essentially and that they were trying to pump out the russians are trying to pump out water but it seemed like they were starting to lose that particular battle uh it had not sunk yet uh there wasn't any other specific details about that ship uh but sounds relatively promising that she probably is going to be out of commission for a while there's also so that ship is a rapucha class landing ship <laughs> which part of the reason the, they're targeting the, the image we have is just this guy <laughs> 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 Yeah. That's amazing. I love it. Um, the reason they're targeting those is those ships are used to ferry all sorts of things back and forth between Sevastopol, uh, Novorossiysk. Uh, they've been used to ferry things across the Kerch Strait when they're not using the bridge uh, to ferry things, including people. When they had the bridge shut down, they used those ships to ferry people. So there's lots of reasons why those are particularly effective targets. Uh, there was also another ship that they talked about specifically on the 24th and said that they believed they hit it, but the satellite images don't necessarily show that they hit it. Or at the very least, the satellite images don't necessarily show uh, what the damage would be from those, which like we're looking at a 2D image. It's really difficult in a lot of cases, especially on a ship that big, to be absolutely certain of what you're looking at. So like until we get actual pictures of like the side of the ship, the top of the ship, close up pictures that give us some more information, um, it's hard to be certain exactly what happened there. At any rate, there's the Azov Rapucha class landing ship that also uh, at least had a missile land close to it. Let's put it that way. Then today, this morning, in fact, um, Ukraine announced that in that same attack, 
they had hit the Rupucha class landing ship called the Constantine Oshansky. I probably screwed that name up, but we're going to just keep going anyways. Uh, which happens to be the Ukrainian Navy's ship that Russia confiscated, for lack of a better term, uh, at some point along the way. And it had not been in service, but Russia has lost so many ships that they had been retrofitting it and trying to get it back into service. And this morning, uh, a Ukrainian official said on national television that they had hit that ship with a Neptune missile. Uh, that is different than what a lot of other folks had thought was the weapon of choice in the rest of that attack most other people thought we were talking about storm shadow strikes um that's the first mention of a neptune if it was a neptune that was used it means that they have increased the range and probably the accuracy on that neptune you'll remember that neptunes were what took out the moskva but even that was uh, a stretch of their range at the time so it's interesting and notable that he specifically said that uh hopefully that wasn't just hopeful chatter and then uh in that same uh discussion there was a mention of them hitting the ivan kurs which is another ship which actually has been targeted by ukraine uh previously i'm just looking at when i don't actually have the name written down for that one at any rate um it has been involved in other usv attacks uh specifically on it's been protecting some of the quote unquote civilian hired by your russian navy ships that transit have in the past transited between uh russia and syria uh, the Ivan Kurs has run as a patrol ship alongside those quote unquote civilian ships uh, in a protection status. And so it has been involved in at least one USB attack. And I, I'm not recalling exactly how many off the top of my head. At any rate, um, that's interesting because that's the first uh, description we've heard of that ship being hit in that particular uh incident as well it would be amazing and spectacular if they actually caused enough damage to four ships in that one attack uh that would be i would call it the most successful single attack they've had so far um there's been other attacks that have hit i think two ships there was a usv attack on the port of sevastopol that hit two ships at a time but i and maybe there's uh, the, earlier, the submarine yes the submarine yeah. attack there's been two on the there's been the usv attack that hit two ships there's the storm shadow attack that hit the submarine and uh that was the rostov on dawn and I have to look it up because I never remember the name. I can't remember it right now and I can't see it because I'm looking at the wrong list. Oh, the Minsk. Um, they hit the Rostov and down and the Minsk with storm shadows in one attack. And then really quite early in the uh, full scale invasion, they hit the Saratov in the port of Bryansk. Um, and it when it exploded, it actually hit two other Rapucha class ships there. So that was probably the most successful attack before this one. Um, but specifically, this would be the most successful attack that we know of and know, have a good idea they, they might actually have caused damage to these four ships. So something to keep an eye on, really interesting. Uh, in the meantime, since that attack, there's been really quite crap weather in the Black Sea. It's been even shipping through uh, Ukrainian corridor has been shut down for the last two days. Today, they had a whole bunch of ships go in and out. 
uh, but that it was shut down for two days. Uh, that storm was so powerful that it will be checking kind of like the edges of Crimea to see if it took out any of the uh, defensive positions in kind of the sand along the uh, coastline of Crimea, because that's what happened the last time there was a fairly strong storm. Um, that could have exacerbated any damage that they did to those ships, depending on how protected they were in the ports and how they were able to secure those ships uh, in between when they hit them and when kind of the stormy weather rolled in. So it'll be, it's something to keep an eye on. Uh, definitely keep your eye out for more information and images specifically, because I have said since that attack first happened, until I see images, I'm often uh, less likely to claim them to be specifically effective um, until we specifically, we see images of those ships either in port and damaged or notice that those ships aren't coming out for any of the particular jobs that they would have had in the past. And so those are the two things to watch in the coming weeks. Boat news. Boat news. Yeah. Wow. It's a lot of boats. It's a lot of boats for one attack. I don't know if I believe sure. it. But it'd be cool. <laughs> I don't know. I, I know. Don't, I don't really have an opinion. I just find it uh, like incredible to uh, to hit that many ships at once, plus the other targets. Yeah, so. and I I would say that that is exactly how I feel about it. Uh, the initial reports of that attack did mention. Um, two different waves of incoming and there was a number of mentions of at least 20 incoming missiles those reports obviously they're first person reports they're not always all that accurate you kind of take them with a grain of salt and wait and actually see evidence of what damage was done they definitely did do some damage it's just a matter of how effective is that damage in keeping ships and how many ships out of working operational order for the time being? Yeah. And there being a lot of missiles and also nobody really understanding what missiles were fired could be that they fired many different types of missiles. Yeah, I would say like of all the things that are interesting about this particular attack ukraine claiming that they've used a neptune as at least one of the missiles for that attack and uh people in sevastopol claiming that there was many of them and there was two waves of them that is quite interesting and there wasn't really any um typically when we've seen some of the missile attacks in sevastopol we've often heard that there were USB or UAVs involved at the same time. And I don't know if I missed them, but I didn't hear that about this attack. And so that also is a little bit notable. Those are two things that really stood out to me about what happened. Yep. It's all very interesting. Um... <laughs> There you go, Gick. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, Gick, Gick just says uh, he he sent me this link of uh... okay. So last night, um, I I was going through video trying to identify vehicles as I do every night. And were you uh, identifying ships, Andrew? <laughs> I was not. No, he he was. Oh, sorry. By the way, hello. I'm here, and I'm not getting bad. You're not. <laughs> I, for, I forgot that that there's a time change. So yeah, it's only it's only one. Um, he was identifying question marks because I always leave question marks in in the spreadsheet. Yeah, this this vehicle. The second I saw it, I was very confused because I knew it was a T eighty. Um, but it's not a T eighty. It's not a T eighty at all. So I'll I'll show the video. Um, I, I I clipped it. Um, 
could be very short, but this is this is the video. And it, it's obviously a T-80, but it's not a T-80. It's just not a tank. So I was very confused. I I went, uh, we, we have a, a Twitter group um, of, of nerds. <laughs> and I went to them. I was like, do any of you have any clue what this is? <laughs> because I know it's a T-80. And there are not that many T-80 based vehicles. Um... I thought that it was either the Ladoga or uh, what's it called? The BTU 80. I could not find anywhere on the internet a photograph of a BTU, a BTU 80. Um, there's also uh, another vehicle that is a, a Brem 80U, which is a uh, the armored recovery vehicle version of the T-80. I'm not sure if Russia has any. I think those were developed uh, for countries that bought the T-80 from Russia, or from the Soviet Union, really. Um, so when, when they've sold uh, just T-80s to other countries, I think they would sell them with the Brem 80U, which is it's just a Brem on a T-80. Uh, similarly, um, like... Uh, there's a Brem on a T-62 and a Brem on a T-72 as well. Uh, although the T-72 version is, is a rare. I think only the Czechs use it, or used to use it. And in fact, uh, Ukraine had one until they sent it to Russia and it blew up on the border, which was brilliant. Anyway, so um, so yeah, it, it wasn't a Brem, a Brem ADU. Uh, you could roll that out, there's no crane. Okay, so... Um, I guess I'll, I'll pause on the part where you can see the vehicle better. So this is a very weird looking vehicle. It's very weird. So um, you can see that it, it is it has the T80 uh, butt. There's the little butt of a T80, and it has these uh, this sloped roof. And um, it has uh, this like weird thing right here, and it has these hatches. And it has this little door thing, right? So um, these are all features that are weird. And you can see there's no crane. Um, I, I I have no clue what a, BT, a BTU-80 looks like. But a BTU-80 is basically the engineering variant of a T-80. It's basically an armored um, bulldozer. That's, that's all it is. It's just, it's a T-80 with, uh, with a bulldozer blade. And that's it. And I have no clue what they look like. So I, I, I did. I, I couldn't figure out if this was that um, or, or a Ladoga. And the, the Ladoga is an exceptionally rare vehicle. Exceptionally rare. It is, uh, I think, only five were ever built. If that, I'm, I'm, there's there, nobody even knows how many were built, but it, it was very rare. And, and its purpose is to basically. Uh, transport uh, VIPs, um, uh, and it's designed to um, protect you from 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 nuclear radiation. That, that's the whole point. Is that it's it's to, to ferry around important people uh, through uh, radioactive wasteland. That that's the purpose of this vehicle, and it has. Um, air purifiers to it has a food and water storage it has a really comfy chair in the back i'll, I'll show you the chair everyone loves this chair um it has this this little comfy chair in the back little little televisions uh vision slits uh whatever that is uh there's a table um there's room for two people um two vips um it has special, uh, you, you know how um, um, armored crewmen, they have like a hat that they wear and the hat is to like stop you from like getting a concussion when you bash your face against the wall. Um, but this, and usually they're made of fabric, like cotton or something. Um, well, this place, th this vehicle, too special for cotton, you know? Why would you? Only a only a peasant would wear cotton. This is made of genuine leather. Okay, genuine leather protecting your face from concussions. 
Um, yeah, so this this was the uh, the top of the top. Um, if you're an important person in a nuclear wasteland, this is the vehicle for you. And um, it uh, went to um, it went to Ukraine for some reason. Um, apparently, they were used um, around uh, Ch uh, Chernobyl when they were doing stuff there. Apparently, I've, I've heard that. I don't know if that, it probably is true because it's, it's uh, why, why wouldn't you send your, your nuclear wasteland vehicle to Chernobyl? I don't know. It's fitting. Um, but, um, yesterday we, um, well, Dirk found it. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Uh, uh, Dirk, uh, where, I don't even know where it was. It's, it's here somewhere. Anyway, he found it. <laughs> you know where it was? <laughs> here. Yeah, it's it's, it's further in the back. <laughs> Is it where I'm, I'm confused? <laughs> oh, it's this one. It's this one right there. Okay. Yeah. I have uh, I have uh, zoomed out too much. I made it too small. That's it. Okay, that's better. Okay, so um, so Dirk found it. It, it, it was right there near Turney, ish, Turney ish. Like halfway between Turney and uh, Kremina. What a weird vehicle. Very rare. We think there may only be five. Um, I've heard that two of those five are not in working condition. Um, uh, I've also heard that one of the five may have been destroyed. So, <laughs> here you go. This is like perhaps 50% of all of this vehicle that Russia has available to it in the butt by an FPV drone. What a time to be alive. Um, our friend, our friend uh, Teet, I think that's how you pronounce your name, Teet, uh, he asks us, um, is there a way to ambush the, um, the TU-95s? Those are, are those called Bearcats? I always forget what the planes are called. Anyway, is there a way to ambush the TU-95? Um, yes, I think to ambush a TU-95. I don't think you can do it from Ukraine, so you can scratch that off the list. I think what you'd have to do is um, get over here somewhere. Maybe if you were in Uzbekistan or something... <laughs> <laughs> or or maybe Azerbaijan, you know? Maybe if you were over here somewhere, you could ambush it. I don't even know how you would ambush it, to be honest. Maybe if you had a drone with a Stinger missile on it, and you knew where the plane was going, because they always fly to the same spot, and you just launched a drone and flew to that spot, and then shot your Stinger missile at it. I don't even know if that would shoot down the plane, to be honest. I don't know how you would... I don't know how you would uh, ambush it. You don't really have weapons. Like, how could you? Um, unless you're like a... <laughs> unless these countries want you to, I guess. If like, if the country were helping you. Maybe Azerbaijan wants to get rid of some, get rid of some planes, you know? Maybe if, uh, if Russia pisses off Azerbaijan enough, by, I don't know, shutting down their pipeline, you know? Maybe that would make them want some revenge. I don't know. But it, I think it would take that sort of event. I don't think you could do it without some state intervention. I, I really don't think a Stinger can shoot down one of those planes, but I don't know what else you could even shoot it with. It's not like you can, like sneak a book over there <laughs> you got you can't like put a book in your in your suitcase and fly it over there um anyways uh today um i bought a very high res image of tourney and um i spent all day looking at it <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh so i i kind of want to talk about that a bit 
because I find it interesting. Um, uh, all of these uh, green eyeballs here, these are all green eyeballs that I located on this new high-res image that we have. And, um, yeah, I don't know, Gick, do you want to talk about it? Do you want to say something? It's so much. <laughs> it's so much. <laughs> it is. And it's actually, it's, it, it's super interesting to see because w what I found really interesting are the ones missing, to be honest, because some of them were, I think, properly destroyed. Yep. Um, and yet they're gone. There were not that many, though. There were not that many. Um, like these, uh, these vehicles here, this is, um, I, I, I just want to kind of show where this is. So we're, we're kind of zooming in right here. Uh, so it's a, a oh yeah, just a, anyway, whatever. Um, these three vehicles, like we're, I'm pretty sure all three of these were completely destroyed, um, but they're all not there anymore. None of those are there anymore. Um, these two vehicles, I think, are both gone. This one's gone. That one's gone. I think that one's gone. Um, these three tanks are still there. That tank's there. All of these are still here. Um, those are there. And those are there. This is new that we didn't even know was destroyed. Um, so this area here, though, like right here, is where a lot of vehicles disappeared. The rest of the place, though, like... Outside of that one area, only a few vehicles are went away. Like there were the two Brems went away. The two Brems were right there. Um and outside of that, like um uh these two vehicles that we had as abandoned were gone. But they never may have never been destroyed in the first place. Maybe maybe farmers are going for scrap metal. I don't think there's any farmers around here anymore. <laughs> percentage wise, how, like just rough percentage. How many did you know about versus how many are green eyeballs now? Um, we knew about ninety six, I think, and there are fifty two new ones. So half again. Yeah. Huh. Are those the two Brems that were towing a different vehicle and then were hit by FPVs? Yeah, these these two Brems were towing a, um, a, a what's it called? A Strifwet? I can't remember. Anyway, it was a okay. one two two. It's Swedish. Yeah. <laughs> I can't say Swedish words. Stritzwagen? Is that what is that what it's called? Whatever. I I think I, I'd say Stritzwagen. Okay. But, You're the um, European, we'll go with it. <laughs> yeah, and and it's a Germanic language, so I'm I'm just gonna claim that's how they say it. Okay. We <laughs> <laughs> aren't gonna argue with you. <laughs> that's yeah. I think that's really instructive though that when we're looking at so many vehicles and so many things that we see destroyed by FPVs uh, or just see footage of them being destroyed, like you're not catching another whole third of them. Did you think we would be missing this many, Gick? Or, or do you think they would be missing more? Or would you, what did you think? Um. I was expecting quite a lot, to be honest, because we did see a lot of those vehicles destroyed. It's just that we never managed to to geolocate them because there's a lot of very similar corners. So to get a definite geolocations on some of them was really, really hard. Um, so if we were to match, you know, the known destroyed vehicles, which have no geolocation, we might be able to fill in probably something like half of that. Yeah, and the other half, I, I guess, is completely new losses which we never knew about. That is another job. I wish we had a person who could just dedicate to doing that. <laughs> I wish we could just have someone just matching these vehicles to that because it it would be time consuming. It not that hard, but time consuming. Um, 
And we, we have all of the images and videos. <laughs> well, the videos might, you know. <sighs> anyway, uh, we have all the images. <laughs> so you, you could probably figure it out. Okay. We're being taught how to say it in the in the chat. Are you, are you reading that gig? Are you being taught? Oh, I need to open the chat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Streitwagen, that's basically the German version of it. If that's how you say it. Yeah. Yeah. But is there a vowel change is the question. Is there a vowel change? I'm asking the chat. Is there a vowel change? Is it the same vowel or is there a different vowel? I think the important thing is, is that it's not Strittwagen, but it's Streitwagen. So, yeah. It's like you would put an E behind the D, I think. Okay. I guess Chad will confirm that. If not, remember <laughs> I claimed it. Yeah. <laughs> so all yeah, Swedish I, people will I need said, to adapt. <laughs> I I I said uh, and you said I, right? Yeah, I think you said Stritzwagen, which is probably wrong. No, yeah, well, we'll find out. I, I I never said I was right. I'm, now so, the chat is trying to educate us. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for education. I just want to know what vowel it is. Because Aussie is currently <laughs> asking. Here. So what's the what's the vowel? Teach us. But, no, I. There's Erland. <laughs> oh, he's there. He's right Erland. here. He's tell us. Well, yeah, I, I had to, I had to jump in. Yes. Uh, so I'm not Swedish, but. Uh, it's not Stritzwagen, or like you said, uh, Gig. It's uh, more like Stritzwagen. Oh, so it's actually Stritzwagen. It's not no, Strit Stritzwagen. Yeah, yeah, I don't care. I claim that it's it's Stritzwagen now. No. So I was I was closer to Gig. Yeah, actually, you were closer than me. Yes. That's because the the the, the Strit, which means uh, yeah, Streit in German. Which is fight or yeah, yeah. like that. Um, it's just too similar. So you, sorry, but all Swedish people and and also you in Norway, you will have to adapt. It's Streitsvagen now. Yeah, my pronunciation isn't Swedish, but it's you're wrong, Gick. <laughs> no. Okay. Can we mute him? Oh, he's <laughs> muted already. Perfect. <laughs> Erland only came in to tell Geek he was wrong. <laughs> yeah, but and I'm unacceptable. And I'm, and I'm gonna go back to bed. Okay. <laughs> it's unacceptable. Good, thanks. <laughs> Good night, guys. All right. So with that. <laughs> All right. So th the place where we we missed the most vehicles is the north, basically. And, um, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, the, the, the middle, the middle of this area, we had the most camera angles from. So geolocating it was probably the easiest because we, we had angles from the north and from the west and sometimes from the south too. So this whole middle area was pretty easy to locate. Um, the north. I'm not sure how we missed like everything. <laughs> there's like there's like two vehicles we had, <laughs> and everything else we missed. Uh, even even these ones over here that we had in the general area were still very wrong in in the location. Um, part of of buying the image, and unfortunately we can't share the image because of um, the rules. Basically. When you buy these images, you can only share them um, within. Um, it's like for internal consumption, you you can share it with your team, and and that's it. And that's just the way it works. I don't write the rules, blame them. 
So I, I wish I could just show the image because it would be cool, uh, but we can't do that. So I'm sorry. Um, but the reason we get the image, it, it's not really so much to find all of the things that we missed, although that's that's interesting to me. That's like, it interests me a lot. Um, but we do it to have like actually correct landmarks for when new events happen. So that we can use those landmarks to find new stuff in the future. Because um, we were using the landmarks we had and getting wrong answers because our landmarks were wrong. And uh, yeah. So that, that is, uh, that's why we do this. Um, and the, the statistical benefit to, to whatever stats we have is cool. I know. Gick, would you like to say more? No, I'm I'm I'm, I'm tilted now. <laughs> You're tilted. You're tilted, tilted because the I, Swedish I, pronounce I, things differently. I, I will have to suffer in shame all evening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well you have to remember English is Germanic too, okay? Yeah. But 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 you deviated a lot more than than the Scandinavians did. Yeah, because we made friends of the French, which was a weird thing to do, but we, we did it. <laughs> Is Ipsum here? <laughs> <laughs> and, and we also made friends with the, um, uh, what word would it be? Um, the Celtics, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. The Picts and the Welsh. And whatever. Anyway, so I, I spent almost all of my day looking at this today, to be honest. <laughs> I, I looked at it from like 8 a.m. until I don't know, like 4 p.m. straight. And I was having fun. Uh, I probably would have had a more productive day if I didn't do that, but I did it. And it was fun. And it was different. It was a different, my Groundhog Day life was slightly different today, Gig. That's very good for you. <laughs> Mine wasn't. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's so many videos left that we haven't even looked at yet. Yeah, that's, that's my night tonight, Gig. That's my night. Anyway. Yeah, that's not mine. No. You have to go to sleep at some point. I, I just did a beautiful, um, I actually located a beautiful smoke ring. Beautiful. Hmm. Yeah, there is some there's some news today from Turney, which was interesting to me. It's unverified um, as at the moment. We might get video evidence of this at some point, but basically, the, the Ukrainians in the this Turney area were very happy today. They they claim that they not only repelled a large Russian attack, but that they're also claiming they pushed Russia back. There's no verification. We might get verification. It'd be cool to get that. But they, uh, that's what they're saying today. That there was a huge attack, uh, very, very many armored vehicles, and that Ukraine not only repelled it, but pushed them back for whatever that's worth. Um, another notable thing that happened is that um, uh, the one two twos. I'll just I'll, I'm just gonna go with that. The the one two twos uh, in in that were abandoned that Ukraine had abandoned in this area are mostly gone, aren't they? Um, so. We had uh, one here, one there. Um, we had um, a armored recovery vehicle based on the 122. Uh, we had a 122 here. Well, it used to be there. It's not there anymore. Um, we had a CV-90 that was abandoned here and a, another 122 over there. So of, of these vehicles, um, these top three 
are all gone now. Um, with a caveat, but I'll get into the caveat in a second. Um, this 122 was towed uh, roughly over here and um, by two Brems. Um, the first Brem was very badly damaged, uh, perhaps destroyed, um, and it was t uh, the second Brem apparently towed the first Brem away and left the 122 right here. Um, this BMP-1 is still there, who cares though. Um, this CV-90 was recovered, and this 122 is still there. So of these lost vehicles, of these Ukrainian losses, um, there's two 122s still out there, and this BMP-1, but who cares about the BMP-1? Um, the, these more valuable vehicles were all apparently recovered at some point. Which is weird. Um, in a sense, it's weird, because we have these, these photographs of these vehicles, um, and one of these, like, some of these vehicles were photographed by Russian infantry, and the Russian infantry were in these trees when they photographed the vehicles there. Now, I don't know when or how these vehicles were recovered, and we also don't actually know who recovered them. But we presume Ukraine did. Also, if you remember, there were two two one two twos um roughly right here that were both hit by lancets. And we did wonder at the time whether those two one two twos were the same two one two twos that were abandoned over here. And maybe they were. Maybe they were towed. After they were disabled, maybe they were towed over here and just left there for like, I don't know, I don't know why, or <laughs> maybe they were just left there for like a second or like a half hour, I don't know, and um, they were hit by the lancets and then towed even further away. Maybe. I don't know. I have no idea. But that, that could have happened. Anyways, that's kind of uh, the news we got from... The satellite today. And hopefully there will be more news from the satellite, because we haven't actually looked through it all yet. <laughs> it's, there's, it's a really big image. Really big. Also, um, yesterday, in that video um, where we found the uh, that weird Russian vehicle, um, Basically, every vehicle in that video was lost, was a new loss. And um, we can see those losses all in these dots here. Um, there was BMP-2s, just lots of BMP-2s, honestly, uh, uh, BTR-82A. Um, and yeah, these are just mostly BMP-2s. This BMP is probably a BMP-2, and then there's a tank that completely exploded. Uh, BMP-2, which I believe is... may have flipped upside down. Or no, this this one flipped upside down. Oh boy. Here. Yeah, this one is upside down. It's hard to tell in this image, but it's literally upside down. Uh, so yeah, that, that, that whole video was bad news bears for the Russians. Uh, a whole video of just new losses, including one of their most rarest vehicles, you know? And I think we should say that we do not have high res for that area. No, we don't. Um, the high and res... I, I feel like we should have. <laughs> well, if you want to go spend another 400 bucks here, you can feel free. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's addicting. <laughs> it's expensive. It makes, it makes everything so much easier. It does make it easier. Yeah. Yeah, the the high res that I bought, I think ends here. Um so I I basically bought um like uh wait, I I basically bought for like this square. It costs 400 bucks. So if, if you want to buy this square for another 400 bucks, you can knock yourself out. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, actually, I, I will not be able to afford it now that I have to go to, to therapy to get me through this Erland debacle. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Um, well. Now we know that German and Swedish are different languages. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um... I know. I don't. I don't really have anything to say about the Bilaharivka area. Do you? Um. Sorry, you asked if I have news about Bilaharivka. Uh, yeah, if it, I. I don't really have anything to say. Like it, it's all been more or less just more of the same, basically. Um. Yeah, we we did see um quite a bunch of drone drops. Interestingly, the industrial area seems to be targeted by both sides with drones. Um. Sometimes it's a bit hard to figure out who's who and 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 you know who's where. Um. We do see um the Kadyrovits targeting the rear area of Bilorivka with FPV drones or, or with drones in general. Today they they published a. I, I don't know, something like a two minute video maybe of a drone dropping a grenade on a, a pickup which was driving behind Bilo Rivka and it didn't hit. So that was two minutes lost. <laughs> oh yeah, I think I think you edited it already there, right? Yeah, 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 I did. Uh it just for some reason it refused to load the twenty the twenty sixth. So I just reloaded everything and here's the twenty sixth now. So, yeah, anyway, I lost two minutes there, and then I basically lost another, I don't know, two minutes to, to figure out where it dropped exactly. Um, um, and then we do have a bunch of still not geolocated um, vehicles in that area. I think yesterday we did have one BMP destroyed, and in the background you were able to see one more abandoned on the slope. Um, we are not yet entirely sure where it is. I think Imi did did have an idea but i didn't look at it in detail yet um so yeah there there's also like this area any sort of high rest will probably be interesting <laughs> to say the least again because i think i think there's a bunch of things to see still luckily the um, 81st brigade is really 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 active in in telegram they post videos on I don't know twenty different channels, <laughs> it can be annoying, but at least there's a lot of footage from there. So it, sooner or later we will we will get the loss. Of it. Yeah, yeah. This <laughs> I I'm not sure whether that satellite image from the other day covers here. Um, it it covered um like this whole area basically is like this it was a rectangle right here and perfectly clear weather it's like 0 0.1 percent cloud cover um i don't know if it went this far south and, and east though unfortunately we can only well we can task um we can task a 70 centimeter resolution pretty, pretty cheaply. Um, but to get a uh, 30 centimeter, we are at the whim of others because I'm not tasking it because it's too expensive. Yeah. At some point, we'll get an image of that place though. Uh, there's there's a lot of places where I we really want images like um like here for example uh like Bilaharivka is one place that we probably really need an image uh, I would like to get one around Spirna that's more for historical purposes not for current purposes um, and we would um, I, I'd like to eventually get one north of Novomikhailovka because we only have the south. And um, maybe um, and, and Robotina. We we never we never got a high res of Robotina, so we're, we're probably gonna need that at some point. But you can see that like this the uh, the density of losses. <laughs> it's just it amuses me, like uh, just how many vehicles Russia loses. It's incredible. 
and and that's only since july or right? <laughs> it's only from july well it, you can't say it's only from july um but we only started logging it from july like most of these vehicles are from before july but because um we had that um i don't know how would you describe it it's like uh archival high-res imagery <laughs> uh or, so we we can we can look at the archive of the high res images and those are from like august of of last year and um so all of all these vehicles were lost prior to august basically well not all of them but like a lot of these were <laughs> see like if you click on them it says only found on high res yeah but most of these were lost after july it's just incredible I, like people say that Russia can keep this up forever, and I just don't see how. Like how? How? Like Russia can't build two thousand vehicles a year, and that's pretty much what they're going to need to do to keep this up. Um, Andrew, we, why are Ukrainian losses not seen? Okay, fine. Here's Ukrainian losses. Does that make you feel better? <laughs> oh, there's a blue drone symbol. Look at that. Oh, that's because it's also showing. Um, Oh. It's because it was showing yesterday too. Um, here, does it make you feel better to look at Ukrainian losses? Is is this what you want? Is this what you like looking at? Look, look at what. Look at what invading Russia gives you. How did how did it go, RDK? Hey, wait. I have a question. Are they yep. still there and like doing things or I stopped paying attention because they pissed me off? Well, they did. They did announce um, that the that <coughs> excuse me, that the goals of the limited uh, military operation were achieved. And that kind of was interpreted as in, you know, they they have left Russia again. Um, and currently, we do not see a lot of footage. The footage they released today was basically the old battle in Kutsinka. Um, So it does appear that, that currently they are back in Ukraine um, or you know, maybe acting as DRG somewhere. Um, but certainly, the, 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 the main incursion into Russia uh, stopped. Okay, so we just got asked, what are the Desert Cross losses? Give me a second, and I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Um, oh, I should add yesterday to the stats. Uh, I'll, I'll, it'll take me a moment, but I'll give you the Desert Cross losses. Up to date. And I added one, I just added one like 10 minutes ago. Well, that. Or 20. That doesn't count. <laughs> because so, it's so always remember to add plus one <laughs> yeah because uh that one is not in the database yet uh, it will be later <laughs> in a few hours okay so search by desert cross okay so there were um 79 desert crosses that have been a casualty of those um of those 79 34 were destroyed um 17 were abandoned and um 21 were damaged. Does that answer the question? I learned this week that Russia actually produces their own combat golf carts uh, of a sort. And I didn't know that. And I thought that was really interesting that they're so bought in on combat 
golf carts that they, apparently they're even making some of their own. Well, I'll tell you something about combat golf carts is that the United States made golf carts like their official vehicle. <laughs> So the, the U.S., if they go to war, they're going to war in a golf cart. How do you feel about that choice, Andrew? Don't ask me, ask CJ, because he's the one riding the golf cart in the war. Hmm. Personally, since I'm not likely to go to war in a golf cart, uh, I feel like I'd want more than just air in between me and flying projectiles. I agree. I agree. So I am putting in the chat what I read to you before. And uh, these are the stats that we have. Um, I don't think, did, did we ever, I don't think, was there a golf cart captured today, Gick? A golf cart captured? Yes, because we it, prior today there was not a golf cart captured. I, I don't think there I, was uh, one today either. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think you you captured those those things because I I think you know most of those which we count as damaged are probably destroyed. To be honest, man, eh, I don't know. I really I really have no idea. Yeah, but why would you capture that thing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, let's see. It, it, it feels suicidal and I don't know. Yeah. So th those are our golf cart stats. I, I hope that uh, amused to the people. I've been asked for golf cart stats constantly. I used to be asked for loaf stats all the time, but now it's golf carts. And it saddens me because I like the loaf, you know? I don't like the golf cart. I remember when the golf cart first showed up and I was laughing at it, saying that it was stupid and you would not survive in it. <laughs> and people were telling me, oh, no, they'll never use them like that. You miss your misunderstanding. They're only going to use them deep in the rear. They're only going to like drive around supplies and stuff. And now they're charging trenches at golf carts. <laughs> I, I, I was like, man. I told you. I told you. There, there's no way. There's. You're never gonna give Russia a a, a weapon, and they're not gonna charge a trench with it. There's no way. You could you could give them like a bunch of katanas, and they'll charge a trench with it. Do you think Wagner would have captured Bakhmut faster with golf carts? With golf carts? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'll tell you what. Um. Once the 93rd got those um, night optics on their machine guns, I don't think a golf cart stood a chance. Uh, yeah, we, we saw the, the loaf get run over by a BMP. It was funny to me. It got smushed. <laughs> it was a while ago, though. Did that video come out again today? Because I've been asked about that that loaf a lot today maybe it was re-released i i didn't see it released again but you know how twitter is yeah anyways these are the ukrainian losses and then i'll turn on the russian losses and <laughs> the russian losses are more uh the purple are unknown i put all the unknown in the russian losses just because on them. I didn't feel like making a third category. Okay. So we we we've Okay. So do you do you want to talk about chassis of VR? Is there much to talk about? There was the big attack the other day that um, Dirk located almost all oh, of it. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I let him locate it <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> because it was a beautiful video and he was doing all the painful stuff before. 
I felt like he would enjoy it. It turned out he didn't enjoy it because it was, <laughs> what was it? They something were... that, like 90 coordinates or something. Yeah. So, <laughs> so just to say, I, I label all of the screenshots. I label them as um, like, um, it's, it's, it's a word, a number, and then a letter. So I had to do A through Z. And then I had to do um, uh, B through Z, and then C through X. That's how many there were. So I felt like I was filling out a giant Excel spreadsheet. That's how I felt. <laughs> yeah, but but to be honest, that video was it was actually you know it was a pleasure um, because this was just what was it four or five minutes? It was one attack. And you know, only I think five vehicles or four vehicles in there. Um, so not even that big, but it was really four minutes of watching something develop. And this is something which we rarely get in the videos we're watching. So this was, I don't know, it it it, it was just a change to 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 our normal work. Um, but yeah, uh, four vehicles attacked, three got bogged down. I think one hit a mine, two were disabled by. Um, by drones or shelling, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah. it, it's unclear whether they hit mines or got hit by drones. Yeah. It, it kind but of it looks, looks like only, the same. only one. Yeah, it, it, it looks like only one vehicle made it out. And I mean, even there, you don't know how far it got. Um, yeah, this is the furthest they reached, which is, to be honest, it's it's pretty exactly how, how it was mapped before. So this is isn't even a big development. But you also don't know how old the video is. Um, and I think that this video came out the day... I think it happened the day before it came out. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, because we heard something, right? Um, but what I noticed is that hey, the infantry... Here. Sorry, again? Dirk's in the comment. Dirk, you could just... Oh, no, you can't. All right, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, so... So what was I gonna say? Uh, yeah, exactly. So so the infantry which disembarks from the vehicles, uh, like you could observe that shelling hell hit them quite precisely. So the outcome of that assault, I th I would say, is um, few survivors on on the Russian side. Let's let's say it like this. Yeah, probably. But we also don't know how many assaults came after it. We also don't know which assault this was. Like, was this the first assault or was this like the fifth, you know? Because like we saw in like Evdivka where they would do, they would do assault after assault after assault and each one would get like a handful of infantry up and they just kept building their numbers that way. So, yeah, we, anyway, they're, they're trying to get into this forest, obviously. They're trying to establish in the forest so that they can uh, move on up and penetrate deeper into the town without having to enter any urban areas. That's their goal, obviously. Yeah, and but, but the, try the, channel, the channel there is going to be uh, hard for them to cross, in my opinion. Maybe. What do you think? I guess it all depends on how it plays out. Um, yeah, the south is probably easier than the north. Um, so I would expect them to to try and capture the the high ground north of Ivanivska, yeah. and then rather take the the southern forest here. Yeah, you, you know how the Russians are. They 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 kind of alternate. They'll just go back and forth and back and forth. And, and just see which one works. That's just that's just how they do everything. They just kind of like, okay, charge. Didn't work. Charge over there. Okay, that didn't work. Charge over here again. They don't really seem to do anything beyond that. Uh, what's what's worrying is that um, Ukraine's probably going to if if the, if Ukraine loses this forest, they're going to have to abandon uh, Bodanivka, which would be unfortunate. 
because it's been a pretty decent defensive position. Um, just just kind of bogging down the Russians uh, further out at arm's length, you know. If they lose that, then they'll have to fall back more, and it'll just be unfortunate. Not not like a not like a crippling thing, but just just not not great. Yeah, um, I just wonder if if Russia gets bogged down here. Um, whether they'll try to go north around, which I think is a very Russian thing to try, would be to uh, try to capture either Hryarivka uh, or even um, go like up and around, even around that, and kind of like go up here. That it just seems like a Russian thing to do to me. Or um, your other option would be to kind of try to cut down the south, which doesn't strike me as super Russian. Uh, it just uh, it's not really seems to, to me the way they they try things, but 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 they could they could try to go around the south if this middle attack fails. Yeah, I'm, uh, to be honest, I'm just wondering how much steam do they still have because 98 here has been attacking for I don't know four months. Yeah, they have made marginal gains, I would say, um, and I'm not sure if if if, if those four. If it was even BMPs, I think it was something else. Um, if those four vehicles, you know, to to assault some some pretty decent forest, um, it's a sign of them, you know, having to 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 um, I don't know, conserve. Well, you'll know they're conserving when the next attack is like thirty golf carts. <laughs> maybe they didn't receive them they they did receive those weird <laughs> loaves maybe those attractive <laughs> loaves <laughs> yeah 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 regarding russia raising forces they constantly raise forces they can't they for my well, from what i understand they're adding like 20,000 per month or something like that to their their strength. And they all need training. <laughs> so it takes like they, they get like groups of them, I imagine. I'm not really sure exactly how it works, but I've heard it's like 20,000 a month give or take. I I think their goal was like 35,000 a month, but I don't think they've ever met their goal. Yeah, the BTR MDM very exciting vehicle. They've lost the they've lost a bunch of them in this general area. I wonder how many of them they have. I honestly have no idea. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna look it up. I'm gonna see what Wikipedia has to say. <laughs> uh. can't quickly find it i'd have to actually do research i think anyways that's kind of that um Klashivka, uh, they did their attack here we we talked about it last time there's nothing nothing new since then really we've just gotten more and more footage of the same attack um if, if you don't remember the attack um they uh had a btr that went for a swim and then it realized they couldn't swim and it sank and uh the rest of the attack roughly went along the same lines. Um, moving on down. Uh, we, we, we need to talk about Kurdimivka. Okay. What do you want to say about Kurdimivka? There's this one road. <laughs> yes. This road going to Mikulaivka Druha. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is with the Russians, but they seem to be building a wall on that road. Because I think if we, if you get high rest from there, that entire road will be stacked with vehicles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like every, pretty much every day, twenty eighth po posts another BTR, which gets destroyed on <laughs> that road. And like the last two, we didn't geolocate because we didn't have certainty about where they are on that road. But they are on that road certainly. So it, it's probably five or six BTRs just on that road now. It's ridiculous. 
Yeah, and and even further back, it it goes up until further back, and and here we didn't geolocate all of them, just one. That one, no, the, uh, well, that's next two. to the drone, probably. <laughs> that one's two. Yeah, but you see something in front of it. Yeah. Then yeah, there's the MTLB. Then they parked another MTLB next to that MTLB for some reason. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, and the, and as I said, two BTRs are still there. There's there's one which isn't on this map. Why so ever? Oh no, that's that's uh, sorry. Okay, yeah, the one I had in mind was the MTLB. But anyway, there there are two more BTRs which which we didn't geolocate, but they are on that road. Yep. And uh, yeah, as I said, it's I can... it's it's a it's a weird road, and I don't understand why. Like, is everything else mined? Did they mine I, it? Yeah, because yes, they were... that's what I was going to say. Because uh, as of a very long time ago, it was a very long time, it was like June, maybe, um, they had a drone following a tank. And this tank was interesting because it had an officer sitting on top. And the reason I know it's an officer is just because of his... Just the way he held himself. He, he was very much an officer. And he was sitting on top of the tank, like, like with his butt on top of the turret, just sitting there while the tank was driving him around. It was like his personal little taxi. And, um, and the, as of, they were just following him around. And what they were doing is they were mapping the path through the minefield uh, with, by following this tank and the officer. And the the tank drove basically here. It was it was driving like right along here, and the tank was like going like through this like crazy dance like around, because it was mo it was avoiding all of the mines they have here. This whole area is a minefield. All of that's a minefield. And there are paths through it, but you have to not be an idiot to drive through it. <laughs> and I don't know if you would trust the average driver to not run into a landmine. Yeah, but, but 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 that doesn't explain the road. <laughs> it's so I mean, it, it must be that that you know, to the sides of the road, there everything's mined as well. Probably they were expecting the assault by Ukraine on Kuryumivka, and were ready to give up the town, which for some time I would say was actually not unlikely. I am shocked Ukraine never captured Kurdyumivka. Yeah. It's it's genuinely shocking. Um <clears throat> Ukraine did something that I don't agree with. And they tried to push just straight east, like towards Odradivka. Um and they took really high casualties doing that. Like really ridiculously high casualties. And um, I think that was a very stupid thing. Like, but it, it, that's what they did. They, and there's like a whole big video that Russia released of that assault um, where they showed like, I don't know, like eight Ukrainian vehicles destroyed, like all along this uh, railway. It's probably like all these vehicles. It's probably, I think this is the video, honestly. Uh, but these, all these like videos, and there is uh, actually those are Russian losses. Uh, yeah, it's it's, it's on it's, it's this one. Those. Yeah, this this Rosamark, this this was one of the, this this is the video. This is the video that they of the aftermath of that assault. It was a train wreck. The whole assault was a train wreck. Um, but yeah, these. Um, I thought that they would um, cut south. And like attack Hirish and uh, take Selena Pilia and Kurdyumivka at roughly at, at the same time and like cut this way. Um, which they eventually tried um, after this, this more northern attack was a total train wreck. They eventually tried going south, but they had just ran out of steam at that point and they weren't getting resources because Ukraine kept uh, diverting resources towards uh, Rabatina. So this whole. That that this one attack basically deflated the whole balloon. That it just kind of ended the Russian, uh, the Ukrainian offensive here. But yeah, 
that's uh I, I noticed today that there are these uh these drone attacks. These Russian drone attacks along this this uh it's like an oil pipeline, or I think, right? I think it's a pipeline. It's a pipeline, but I, I think it's water because it, it feeds into the channel. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. And uh, there's been ongoing shelling here, which is also interesting. Um, it's not like super interesting, but it's just it's neat that Ukraine still firmly holds ground uh, from prior to uh, the full scale invasion. I, I can tell you where that shelling is there. I feel like I've personally been there because <laughs> okay. I don't know in, 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 the, in the last three weeks or something like that, I have, I don't know, I've geolocated at least six or seven videos exactly there of drones or shelling. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering, is it all the same, you know, same day footage <laughs> or what is it? Um, but yeah, this, this area, I, I feel like I know it by heart and I, can, I, I will become your tour guide. <laughs> I feel like there's this this one video. I feel like you and Dirk keep locating this video because I am certain this video is from like October. <laughs> because I've I when whenever I see this video, I mark it as old, and then like one of you two like locate it anyway. <laughs> it's it's always different shelling, you know. They impact some somewhere different, but that's what I meant. I feel like it's. It's probably one hour of, of shelling, and they're releasing it over the course of one year. Yeah, there's there's always the the one shell that hits it hits the power line, right? No, there's one shell that hits the power line, like it, like the shell somehow through like some feat of statistics landed literally directly on the cable and exploded in midair. I swear to God, <laughs> one of these, if you, there it is, you see, it hit the cable in midair and exploded. It's amazing. What are the odds of that? Pretty small. Well, what are the odds of hitting a tree branch right on top of you <laughs> with a mortar? Oh, you did! You didn't jump into what I just said. I, I was sure you were, you were going to show the video. No. Oh. Do you do you want to show a video? Uh, the think... the one, the one with the motor, the nope. Russian motor. I don't think we can. Oh, nothing happens. Well, uh, there was a a very interesting uh, mortar video today. It was about Demon. Did you, I don't know if you saw that. Um, Demon is a, a Ukrainian woman who um, her her boyfriend and her boyfriend's best friend um, were um, taken out by a, a Russian tank earlier in the war, and um, under her command. Um, she recovered their bodies and sent them back home. And then she fell into a bit of a depression. And um, her mother basically told her to, uh, to keep on fighting. Basically. Not in those words, but basically. And she was like, okay. And uh, she was um, taken under the wing of Witch, who is a... Um, a uh, controversial figure in the Ukrainian army, but we're not going to get into that. But she was taken under the wings of which, um, which gave her a 120 millimeter mortar and told her to go seek revenge. <laughs> and uh, she is now the commander of a 120 millimeter mortar. And uh, anyway, there's a little, a bit of a documentary, not really a documentary. It was like a piece like a, a video essay about her that came out today. And that was interesting. Uh, another piece of inf interesting news is that, um, what was it? Uh, 
Ukraine was making how many shells per month? I forgot. I know that their goal was to make 100,000 mortar shells per month. Um, I can't remember how many they're making now. Was it 20,000 or 80,000? I can't remember. But anyways, they're making a large... Uh, exit, do you know? I thought it was 20,000, but if yeah, you yeah. give me a second, I'll try and check. Okay. Yeah, 20,000 is fairly good. But I, I know their, their goal is eighty uh, 100,000 was their... Their long-term goals, 100,000 per month. Um, 100,000 per month is a good number in one sense. And in, in one sense, it's a good number in that it's probably more than any other country is giving them per month. Um, but in another sense, it's not anywhere near enough because they need at least a million. So it's like, it's like it's one-tenth of what they need per month. So it would be nice if Making making mortars is uh, hard, I guess. No, I did not see the the Madier video. Gig, did you see the Madier video? Um, I like I I looked at it for five seconds. I checked how long is it, and then I realized, <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe later if I have time. Yeah, that's how I feel about almost everything. Um, uh, it but, was 20, sorry, it was 20,000. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, 20,000. Yeah, but but I know that the <laughs> that that Magia seems to be leaving a lasting mark on the Russians because they have written, I think, uh, I mean, well, I, I, I can't pronounce it anyway, but something like Magia, fuck off, um, on the street. Like on on the M14 highway, um, yeah. Which is, I would say, that's a lot of recognition. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and he his his influence on this war is probably more than anyone else. Yeah, could be. But I'm I'm more surprised that they found a spot where they could still ride on that highway, because. <laughs> It should be all covered in loaves and pickups. <laughs> yeah, I, maybe they had to tow some away to write it out. <laughs> I, I thought it was there's a one video of a of a Russian driving down that road, and the point of the video was look how many vehicles we've lost to FPV drones, and it's like like two minutes into the video, he gets hit by an FPV drone. <laughs> 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 oh man well, that video just made me crack up when I saw it and he was like ah we've been hit it's us too <laughs> <laughs> I think the, the, the drone didn't do much damage to their car I don't think but it was funny yeah. Madyar has done a lot he 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 he, he he spearheaded the the drone usage the way the drones are used today. Not like he he wasn't the first to think of a drone, obviously, but but the way that Ukraine uses them, he he was the catalyst that that made that possible. He's also been investing in electronic warfare and other things too. Like he he's been investing in like boats and um, just lots of different technologies and and beyond that he's been training other officers which i think is fascinating he's been training other officers and how to think more like him and i think that's a good thing i think getting rid of the soviet mentality and accepting more of this entrepreneurial experimental mentality i think is good for Ukraine to to be more nimble and smarter and uh, more willing to to take risks and and knowing knowing how, like what risks are worth taking and which ones are not you know and learning over time like not just making the same mistake forever so I think those are all sorts of lessons that you can get out of Madyar. Um, 
plus his guys train pilots. We know that Ukraine has been trying to uh, basically get drone programs in every single battalion and um in order to that's, that's a lot of pilots you have to train uh from scratch because there's no there's no centralized training or anything like that so madyar has been training a lot of pilots so hi constantine Um, Constantine, do you want to talk about your fundraiser? No. Okay. Alright, so, uh... Anyway, so... Re regarding um, news from this uh, cranky area, I, I don't really know much. I don't think anything's really changed, to be honest. It's just more of the same. I've heard that um, over the past few days, Russia has launched a few more assaults into cranky, but they've all failed, from what I understand. Okay, so we get to Avdivka. Avdivka. Um, Russia has been ad, uh, advancing in, in Berdichy. They've been trying to break through, uh, to get through the Ukrainian line. The Ukrainian line appears to be pretty far west. Um, and the Russians, I don't think, have even gotten close to breaking through, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the reason Constantine couldn't talk is because he didn't have a mic. <laughs> no, 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 I can't have a mic. Can you hear me? Barely. <laughs> you, you sound yeah. like you're on the other side of a room from the phone. It's probably using another mic. But I couldn't come because my wife, I was showing something to my wife. So okay. I yeah. drew it cheeky and I was like, I got to show you. Okay. Uh, yeah, let me bring it into my uh, audience and see the one. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. Um, I don't know why, but there are Ukrainians claiming that they still hold part of Orlivka. I don't see any evidence of that. Uh, Tonenka is completely lost, and Russia is trying to push through these fields. I don't think they've had much success, to be honest. Yes, to be honest. Hi, Constantine, you're back. And you're back. Yeah, can you hear me now? Oh, that's, that, that is, that is very significantly better. All right, so it appears that uh, my notebook connects to the to the iPhone and my iPhone uses the microphone from my iPhone and the iPhone is in my pocket. Okay, that explains it. it sounded like you're on the other side of a room. Yeah, but yeah, I uh, I, I got it switched. Thank you. So yeah. I felt like I felt like I was when I was talking to you, um you were whispering to me from fifty feet away. That's what it felt like. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, do, you, do you want to talk about your fundraiser? Uh, well, I, I have a feeling that I only come here to talk about my fundraisers. <laughs> That's fine. I don't feel comfortable. But yeah, it, it, I'm having a fundraiser right now. It's to get at least 12. I'm hoping to get 14 uh, drones to Ukraine. Uh, Thermal Vision drones, Mavic 3T, DJI Mavic 3T drones. Uh, to 92nd, to 5th, to uh, actual lost count right now, to which brigades because it's so many. Um, and uh, we're right now uh, about the target is $60,000, and we're about to reach half. Uh, so I'll be super stoked if you, you know, if any of you can donate uh, or retweet if you have Twitter. I'm not sure you do, but uh, so our fundraiser goes through the PayPal. It's tax deductible. 
Uh, so whatever you donate, you can claim as, as your tax deductions in the end of the year. Uh, so I would, you know, greatly appreciate and thank you for bringing, bringing this up. Uh, the thermal drones are very important right now. Uh, well, they always were important, but right now uh, Russians are super active during the night. Uh, as more drones come in on the battlefield uh, during the day, like it's it's really really hard to move for anyone. Not only not only Ukraine, but basically everyone, uh, all the troops on both sides. Uh, so uh, Russians are trying to move more during the night. Uh, and uh, we have, you know, uh, a bit of a solution for it, and that would be thermal vision drones. Uh, they would provide the eyes and during the night. Uh, and uh, yeah, I posted a nice small video that Andrew probably could not post here right now. No, um, <laughs> I showed part of it, but that's all I could show. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, and yeah, so if you donate, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, and I appreciate your support from everyone who, who, uh, who listens to Andrew and who helps. So thank you. Yeah. And, and the, the link yeah. is in the description. Thank you. I think it was in the description the whole time, but I just put it again. I think the first, well, the first link was uh, to the uh, original uh, post. Let's make it like this. If you, if we reach. Uh, 33,000 today uh, by tomorrow morning I'm going to release uh, thermal one of the most brutal thermal vision videos that you have ever seen if like if thermal vision uh, video can be brutal it's it's one of those most br brutal thermal vision videos unfortunately Andrew will never show it but if you <laughs> come on Twitter and I'm sure if I post it it's going to be on all the telegram channels that you can only imagine in the next couple of hours so uh yeah uh so if we reach $33,000 that's only three and a half three and three point six thousand dollars away uh yeah it's gonna be, it's, it's it's a drop you know what you could uh, do I, I was just yeah. thinking about this you could set up a subscription, right? Um, on the brutalities on 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 Twitter, you can you can make it so there's paid only content. Gotcha. You could. Yeah, it's an interesting idea. It's an interesting idea. I don't know how much uh, you can get, and if you can read. I think it, it's five dollars be... per person. Yeah, that would be too much. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I'll 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 look into that. I'll I'll see if I can redirect it uh, to the uh, to the charity. And yeah, it would be it would be it's it's a great idea. If but it would force me to, um, it would force me to you know what to extort soldiers for the for more videos. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I I, I I think the way the subscription works is it's. Uh... It's it's kind of like um, Patreon, I think, in that you, it's like five dollars per month per uh, to, to view the locked content. I think I think that's how it works. Gotcha. Well, I'll look into it. I'll look at, at the terms yeah. and I'll see if I can if I can send it to them uh, to our charity. I was, that's just uh, it was just an idea that popped in my head because that that could uh, at least make it harder for all the telegrams to s immediately steal the video. <laughs> they would have to pay you five dollars for uh, it. I, don't, I really, you know, as <laughs> long as they, you know, it's a good telegram. Like, I don't mind. I don't mind if it's traveling, especially videos like brutal as this. Uh, I would, you know, I want them to spread and I want people to see what the war actually is like. Uh, so that no one is, you know, romanticizing it and and think that it's, you know, cool and you're gonna, you know, running like those super special forces in the conventional war. Uh, but instead, you're gonna be, you know, hiding from drones, looking, looking, uh, and in the sky and hoping that no nothing comes into you. Uh, and uh, when the mo when 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 you relax and you're tired, you know, you have no uh, no. <laughs> no force to continue no will and you will have something uh, that will just tear you apart so that's the reality of the world there is not, nothing uh nothing romantic about it nothing beautiful uh and it's it's quite you know um damning 
you know, it's it's really it's really ugly. It's really ugly. So if people see how ugly it is, I think that um, it really only can make the world better because people will think you know, three times before actually invading anyone, invading any other country. Uh, but yeah, it, and maybe it, it will reach Russian soldiers and they will, do, you know, uh, at least some, you know, it, it's not, I don't have a goal to convince absolutely every, uh, every Russian not to come to Ukraine. I don't think it's in my power, uh, but even like three people see it, uh, and change their minds. Uh, well, we made, uh, Russia, Russian army three, uh, three, uh, three soldiers less. So. I think it works, and I think it's just not as uh, uh, it, it's not as immediate and not as uh, you know not as effective as uh, as artillery, for example. But uh, the cost is not high, so uh, it's so I think it's good. Yeah, I I have noticed that a few of your videos have done rounds in in Russian circles, and they have. Uh, very emotional responses. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's good to hear. Yeah, we posted a lot of videos. Uh, I, 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 lately, I've been slacking. I was not, you know, getting the videos. I'm not doing anything with them uh, because I, I just didn't have time. We had a huge um, $100,000 fundraiser for the excavators. And man, those excavators are time demanding. Uh, you know, getting them, it's logistics. With the drones, I have everything figured out and it's quite easy for me. Uh, but with this, uh, with the um, uh, with the excavators, it's much more complex. And of course, we're buying, we're not buying new excavators, uh, which uh, it has to include the repairs. Uh, and repairs are quite complex uh, and expensive. So it's it's really, really really time consuming for me i have to do negotiations with the with the logistics and the customs brokers and they were european ones they work um uh, they work when it's really early in in the united states and they email me you know they reply on all until like 2 to 1 p.m their time uh which means that it's it's like 4 a.m. in the morning where I am, uh, so I have to, so I have to watch my phone during the night because I know if I wake up uh, and answer them at like at let's say 8 a.m. Uh, my time, they will uh, reply to me only the next day, and I cannot, you know, I cannot afford such delays, so it's quite stressing right now, uh, you know. <laughs> But yeah, we'll we we'll be doing it, and this is um, this is gonna be our, my first uh, uh, import operation into excavator import operation in Ukraine. Uh, before I was buying excavators inside Ukraine, but they're a bit more expensive. Um, and right now, so this is the first experience for me, and next ones are gonna be much easier, and uh, we're gonna be able you know to provide more for less, and we will build the fortifications. Uh, will help uh, many brigades uh, build their own fortification and don't rely on some centralized service uh, to get them the equipment, uh, and they will just be able to do it themselves. So we're on it, and thanks. Thank you for support. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. The. Uh... Uh, I've I've seen a lot of drone footage. I've seen I've seen a lot of footage of like everything at this point. Um, and it, it's hard for me to like understand not having seen it. Like you you know what I mean? Like it's I I I can't really even um like understand the uh, the mindset of the people who haven't seen it because I'm so immersed in it. Like it, it's hard for me to. Uh, 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 I just kind of like uh, it's at the point where I just assume everyone sees it, you know. I know most people haven't, so it's just weird. I don't, I don't know how to describe that. Yeah, people don't understand the brutality. Uh, still, a lot of people don't understand what this war looks like. Uh, I've spoken with a couple of American uh, 
um not special forces but like you know general general uh, infantry and they don't even they don't seem to understand what 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 this war lo- looks like uh and it's it just looks completely different and you are so much more vulnerable than you were before uh and at the same time uh i heard of the response oh we have uh, electronic warfare that's gonna you know protect us from everything uh but like no it's not uh electronic warfare is not is not a panacea uh it's not gonna solve everything and russia is very strong and always was strong in electronic warfare uh and they still struggle to uh, to um to do anything against uh uh even uh such simple drones as mavic uh dji commercial mavic drones that cost only two thousand dollars uh and also and even from fpvs that are even simpler than mavics uh, they don't have much protocols that you know the jump fre- frequencies it just you know a standard a standard uh fpv drone is just transmitting analog signal a video signal um uh, that is not encrypted so and it's a no frequency it's really easy to jam and even that's that's a problem because uh uh jamming is not is, is not a panacea and you cannot have uh uh, too much. Uh, you, uh, you really need a lot of power to jam something uh, in the in the sphere of operations. Because if you like, if you direct your your energy uh, against uh, like particles jamming stream against the drone, it's quite easy to to jam it and just kill it um, to jam the controls. But uh, if you don't point at it. You need like you know. Uh, you need to cover an entire sphere, and that's like uh, basically to the power of three uh, energy uh, it, 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 that that is needed, and that's really really a lot. Uh, and the bigger the area that you have uh, that you operate in, the bigger uh, protection, uh, the the more power you need. Uh, and there is simply no no, no such systems that uh, can provide that. And systems that are powerful enough, they take a lot of room and they're easy to destroy with with other artillery. Because FPV drones is just one dimension of the battlefield. Uh, well, it's not a dimension, but it's only one part of the battlefield. But also, if you bring up your uh, equipment, such as uh, I don't know, jam, you jammer that's gonna suppress everything. Well, you position it somewhere. It's quite easy to find because because it's like it's literally emitting uh, huge power, huge radio waves uh, that you can uh, locate uh, and uh, you can spot it and you can destroy it with artillery. And there is nothing that can protect it against the artillery. Uh, so, uh, so, so yeah, the, go ahead. There, I I kind of wanted to talk about this. Um, not 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 that jamming, but the the f- the way drones have become such a terrifying weapon. Um, in 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 the past few weeks, I don't know if Gick agrees with me on this, but in in the past like week or two, I've I've noticed a lot of um, like combined arms sort of drone attacks where. There, there's multiple drones, and each drone has its own role. Um, like, for example, there might be one drone that only carries, um, uh, like, tear gas grenades. Um, there might be one drone that carries um, uh, incendiary grenades. Uh, there might be one that carries, um, like, a, just, uh, just hand grenades. One might carry, um, you know, purpose-built bombs. Or um, and then you might have a few uh, dive bombers and a few FPV drones helping. Yeah, and, don't, and don't forget also that you have another drones, uh, repeater drones that is flying with repeater equipment at, attached to it, uh, and there is like ground antenna that tracks this drone, uh, sends the signal, and then this drone uh, retransmits the signal to the 
uh, to the drones that are, are you know attacking so that you have also the, those this type of drones uh, at the and there almost in every FPV attack you have them uh, they make uh, drones almost immune to uh, electronic warfare unless you really have directed uh, uh, directed you know anti drone guns uh, which are really easy really hard to operate because it's it's really hard to point them so it's a lot of um yeah the 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 warfare get the drone warfare gets more complex and it gets more effective um, this these yeah. combined attacks are really scary because mm. they all the different drones are performing different roles and the, their goal is to flush people out of their their defenses it's like uh you know reminded me of mad max you know when there is huge wave of uh crazy people riding different cars yeah yeah buggings and that's that's basically when the drone attack is happening against you 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 look at it and you have all those crazy drones coming in and you know you 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 are fucked there's there's like there's nothing you can do like if if you don't have the electronic warfare set up and, and like practically nobody does or at least I mean, if, if there is electronic warfare, then the attack, I don't think, would happen in the first place. So if the attack is happening, it means you don't have it. Like, there are some local uh, handheld jam jammers that, that are, like, train jammers that are much smaller. They work on much uh, smaller areas, but they work on a limited uh, number of frequencies. You have different roles coming in. They can only last you, like, it consumes, for example... 80 80 watts of watts of power and which means that in the trench you only have you know your biggest uh, power station uh, not not the generator because you cannot run generators in the in the frontline trench uh but the biggest power station it can only uh carry i don't know 1000 watts probably that that's the best you can you can ho hold in your trench and all uh, there is and what is 1000 watts when it's consuming like 80 watts an hour it's only it's only 11 hours for you and god knows when you're gonna be uh, when, when you will have rotations i know i know uh situations where people had to wait 18 days till the rotations uh on average of course you like at least it's one day so it's it's not the those jammers are not perfect, and and uh, they don't work as as people think that you just flip it and and, and you're good. But what yeah. works, what, what really works, I want to say, is the actual uh, proper fortifications. Uh, they really work. I mean, it's not one, nothing is one hundred percent in work, absolutely nothing, but they really work well. If you design well your fortifications, uh, it's really hard for drones to do anything with them uh because uh one of the biggest problems that well not problems but uh the drone problem is that it cannot carry uh too much uh too much explosives right so fpvs carry up to 3.5 maybe four kilos in total uh which is probably around uh two and a half to three kilos of explosives uh the bombers such as vampire well they carry a bit more uh but it's still not it's it's still never is a full you know 155 millimeter shell it's just uh, uh it's maybe seven up to up to six uh remember remember we were dropping the uh tm anti-tank mines i think those are the biggest ones so far that that were used uh but yeah. even that uh you know proper fortifications can help even against direct hits from from things like that but proper fortifications is you got to build them it's 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 uh it's not very easy to to build them and you have you have to have the materials you have to have the people in the right spot at the right time because when you're on the front line already uh man you're not going to be building anything there because uh you only have you know small travel and you when no one is watching you can spend 15 minutes fixing them something Man, these these drones like just 
flinging like uh, thermobaric grenades into um, like a hole in the ground, basically. I don't know if you want to call it a bunker or whatever. But just like flinging thermobaric grenades in there, dropping incendiary grenades on top of the roofs of um, fortifications. Um, it's just they they can flush you out, you know. Um, especially if you panic, uh, like throwing um, tear gas into uh, confined space. Very unpleasant. Um, a lot of people panic and, and run away. Um, so they, they try to flush you out of your defenses and then take you out with the grenades. And if you if you get into a spot that the the drones dropping bombs can't hit you, they can try to fly a FPV drone into where you are to flush you out using that weapon. Um, so that that appears to be the goal is the to push you out of the fortifications. Now, uh, you can probably make fortifications to withstand it, but a lot of these attacks they seem pretty successful to me. There was there's one video recently where it, it seemed that Ukraine used like maybe three drones and they wiped out an entire trench and captured it with their infantry. And I'm not sure their infantry even did anything. Like they just kind of stood there while the drones wiped everybody out and then once they were gone they walked in. Anyways, Gick, what do you what do you think? What have you seen? Do you agree? Yeah, I agree. And also one thing you need to consider is if you have those handheld guns by the way um like those handheld anti-drone guns just today there was a video of russians using that against an fpv drone but you know if the fpv drone is on trajectory um it's it's gonna explode when it falls down right so you can yeah. interfere you well, can maybe. you could jam it um but it lands there <laughs> the, the russians felt that um yeah, but but what you said earlier um, with the combined arms, yeah, what I observe a lot is is Russians, particularly Russians, using tear um, tear gas grenades to get the soldiers out of a trench, and then just you know luring and hovering over there with grenades or other bombs. Yeah, and they use, they use a lot of incendiary grenades too. Yeah, it's it's not pretty. You don't want to be infantry <laughs> right now. Yeah, it, it, and it's the way, because it, it seems both Russia and Ukraine are doing these combined attacks with, with drones, but they do it very differently. Russia it uses a lot more tear gas and incendiaries, and Ukraine uses a lot more explosives. So yeah, um, that, was, that was kind of a topic I, I wanted to sneak into this, uh, this little, little stream of ours. So I think it's important, and I think it's something that will continue to develop. I think we're going to see more and more specialized drones. Yeah, I think as the, like, imagine this war doesn't, doesn't look like it's going to end soon, right? And imagine how like every day there are more and more funds being invested into it especially like in the small drone warfare and by small i mean under 150 kilos you know like from from one kilo to uh, 15 probably there are so much funds being invested into it and imagine how it's going to, not only funds, but also it's being tested live, like instantly. You get it on the battlefield, you get the feedback instantly. And imagine how it's going to look like in, in, let's say, two or three years. Uh, I honestly, like, it's quite terrifying, I would say. Yeah, and as someone working with, for example, artificial intelligence, 
I see really endless uh, possibilities that you know that that make these things even deadlier. I I think um, I think we're going to start seeing drones that can fire projectiles. I think those those might be really soon because there are there are companies that have already developed the drones and want to send them to Ukraine. And I think they'll probably show up soon. I don't know when or how many there would be, but I think we're going to start seeing drones that fire projectiles. Now, what the projectile is, is um, something that nobody can really, nobody really knows what is the, the best thing to fire. Because you can fire grenades, you can fire bullets. Um, uh, there are some drones that can fire missiles, um, including anti-air missiles, which would are interesting. Uh, so that that's I, I think that's that's going to come soon, though. It, um, in in a and by come soon, I mean like purpose built, like purpose designed drones, not not like people gluing stuff together. And there are some like pretty small, heavy-ish lift drones, like um, drones that aren't that much bigger than like an FPV drone, but can carry uh, a lot more weight. Um, those could that could change some things too. I think like uh. I well, you know, it's not really an FPV going to be anymore. But the the bomber drones with AI, if you if you invest more, develop more in them, uh, you know, so they they you eliminate the human mistake factor. They can be super super cheap and super super effective. And they're like, they're like flying artillery. Yeah, and and they can find um, uh, you can make these these drones pretty big because it's really well not as big as uh, as huge one, but maybe maybe something like DJ Matrix uh, Matrix three hundred, like let's say five five kilo drone, five seven kilograms drone, but it can carry. Uh, something like a mine, and you can make them FPVs. Uh, this is my crazy idea. I know, I know it sounds crazy, but you can make a, a FPV drone size of like, like this. And right now, problem with F, with, with these drones is they're large. You can hear from the from far, and for them to drop anything, they have to hover, you know, and stay in place for quite long period of time. Which make them vulnerable. So they're used mostly at night uh, with thermal vision. But if you have AI that actually you know can fly this drone really fast, and um, it's really hard to f to hit moving targets um, and low flying targets. I mean low, low, like uh, you know up to 20, 20 meters. It's really hard to 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 hit them. And those things can uh, not only act as fpvs just you know just like a bomber but they carry like huge huge uh, much bigger explosives uh it's just you know an idea but but even without them the fpvs with, with ai properly configured when you have many of them when you have you know they can operate switch one comes in another goes out goes out you may have three five of them and you have another drone that just watches provides information and allows you to select the targets I can see, uh, I can envision systems like this in, in near future, like two years on, on this battlefield. And it's it's just going to be devastating. The, um, even, even just having dr this, the drones we have now, just dropping bombs, if you could make it so that drones like once it drops a bomb it flies back home and gets a new one and a new one replaces it like if you could just have it constantly be replaced that so you constantly have the drones up you, you could that, that that would be devastating like it's a devastating weapon 
It, it's it's not that complicated. It's just it's just like a little like a little quad drone that flies up and drops a bomb. You know. Um. You you could you could dominate like you it's like an area denial weapon. It's like uh like mortars and artillery. It's like the same sort of deal. If you if you had the AI to first you know constantly keep the ammo up, so you're you're topped up on 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 the grenades. And also have the AI, you know, target and drop on their own. It, it, it's like uh, I don't, I don't really see a difference between that and like a mortar. Uh, anyways, drones are scary. They're they're really genuinely terrifying. Yep, and then there's there's the ground drones too, like um, like the little drones that carry around a machine gun. Those are interesting. I and, think more interesting to me is the ground drones that can carry people out carry people to eat back them, yep. uh, and can, can carry supplies in uh, to specifically dangerous places. They yeah. aren't always going to be useful because they can be targeted by FPVs, um, but it's better than having a person targeted by an FPV. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, they they have tons of drawbacks, but they're cheap, you know. So, like, who cares? <laughs> like, we we see them get stuck every once in a while. Um, there was the German one that got destroyed the other day, um, and the the German company basically said like. Yeah, they blew one up, but we'll just send like 14 more. Yeah, there was another one today. Of of the same drone? Was it is it called um, a thermal? I'm not sure or? it was the same because it was pretty pretty far and um thermal vision. Okay. Uh, yeah. But yeah, there was another one and it's also not clear if it's destroyed, it's probably just damaged. Yeah. Well with a... A recovery, like a little recovery robot. I'm not sure of the differences between destroyed and damaged. I don't think anyone's going to go recover it. <laughs> Anyways, so I think that's uh, we covered we covered a bunch of different topics, didn't we? Is there anything else you'd like to say? Any parting, parting words of wisdom? I don't have anything. I'm just eating shepherd's pie that my wife just brought me. Dude, really shep tasty. shepherd's pie is great. It's like uh, one of my favorites. It's a great meal. You know, language learner introduced me to the shepherd's pie. Oh yeah, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, so they're fantastic, and and they're you can like, you can make like a like a few of them like all in one batch and just like keep them in your freezer and just cook them when you're hungry. They're great. All right. So, uh, all right, I'm going to stop the stream now. <laughs> I think we're done. All right. Uh, thank you for everybody who came and listened and, uh, we'll be back on Friday. Thank you for coming. Goodbye. And thank, thank you. Bye-bye.